All right, good morning, Algebra 1. Uh, we're going to do one more lesson on quadratic functions, and we're going to actually talk about a lot of new vocabulary today, more towards the end of the lesson and throughout. So it's really important that you get to a summary at the end of the lesson so we can talk about the vocabulary. So just to get started, we have a cannon that's 10 feet off the ground. It launches a cannonball straight up with a velocity of 406 feet per second. So we just want to imagine there's no gravity for a second. Just take gravity out of the equation. Uh, it's always easier. And we'll continue, pretend the cannonball continues to travel upward at the same speed. Unrealistic, but pretend. So complete the table with the heights of the cannonballs at different times. So at this point, pause. And just think about real quick how you'd fill it in for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so whatever, T seconds. Okay, so now that you've paused, if we're going up at 406 feet per second, and we're starting at 10 feet off the ground, this is really just going to be 10 plus 406, which just gets me 416. Uh, change the formatting of this table because it's really bad. And then for 2 seconds, we're adding 406 again, so 416 plus 406 which really just gets me 822. Okay, so we're going to add 406 again, and we're going to get 1228. And then add 406 again, and get 1634. And then add 406 again, and get 2,040. All right, so now take a minute and think about after t seconds what is happening. So what's an expression to model the growth over time? Pause it, think about that for a minute. So hopefully we're thinking slope intercept form, mx plus b. And hopefully we're thinking like, well, uh, it has a constant rate of change, right? And a starting value. Starting value is 10. My constant rate of change is 406 feet per second. Okay. Um, and you could also write it as 10 plus 406x. All right, so this is my expression. I'm gonna write that in a nice purple color so we can see everything that you've added in. All right. Double check our math real quick, 406, 406, 406, 406, 406, okay. Um, this is take two, because I got 10 minutes through another recording and realized I did all the math on that table wrong, I had to redo it. So, that's why I cut off a little bit. Let's write an equation to model this. Now that we have our expression, let's use that expression to write an e equation. Well, slope intercept form wasn't mx plus b, it was y equals mx plus b, or distance, d equals mx plus b. So d equals, okay, d equals 10 plus 406x, make it nice and bold, make it nice and big. All right, so let's look at the next part. Now, previously, that was exploring idealism. There was no gravity, there was just 406 feet per second, constant speed, cool. That's not realistic, though. It's not real life. Um, so now, we're going to look at... Uh, the actual heights of the ball. So the actual heights of this bowling ball, because there's gravity, it's pulling the ball down to the earth. So the math's already been done for us. So what we're going to do is compare the values in this table with the values that we calculated earlier. So I'm just going to highlight some purple so we can just see what we're comparing. All right. So spend a minute. Think about how you could compare the values in this table with those in the table up here. So one other thing I'll tell you is that we should be looking at the difference between uh, the actual distance, uh, actual height, and the non-gravity height. All right. So you work on that. And I will just give this function a name. So you're finding the differences between 
the actual height and the non-gravity height for the NFT. NFT for no gravity. Find those differences. What do you notice? Okay. I realize I'm talking to you, but you should have paused the screen already. So, now that you've done all the differences, because at some point you paused the screen, let's figure out what is, for each of these, uh, the actual height minus the non-gravity height. All right, we're going to do that for each one. Here's our function notation, because it's easy. Well, not easy, but it keeps it easy for me. So at zero feet, what is the difference? What's the difference at zero feet? Well, 10 minus 10 is zero. So we got zero. I'm going to put that in purple too. Put it in the fourth. Okay. We're going to do the same thing for D of 1 and N of 1. So we got 400 minus 416. I notice I'm subtracting the, I'm doing the actual minus the pretend. It's like residual plots. It's like the actual data point minus the predicted one. That was a flashback. So 400 minus 416, that gets us negative 16. Make that purple. And the same thing for D of 2, D of 3, D of 4, D of 5. We're seeing if you notice a pattern, which you might notice and you might not. It kind of relates to previous lessons, this pattern we're going to see. So the difference at 2 feet is 758. Minus 822, and that gives us negative 64. No, it doesn't. 758 minus, yes, it does. Sorry, negative 64. Panicked. Saw 8 minus 2 and thought it was 6. No. Okay, 758 minus 822 is negative 64. And then D of 3 minus N of 3, so 1,084 minus 1,228, that gets us negative 144, this is 16, and then 128, that gets us 144, yes, pretty good. And then let's see, at 4 seconds. The actual height was 1,378 minus the predicted of 1,634. See, ignoring gravity is getting more and more uh, consequential because these differences are getting much, much bigger. I wonder if it's quadratically getting bigger. All right, let's see. So up to 1,400 is uh, 22. And then 234 gets 256. So you know, do you notice anything about these numbers? Is there a pattern or relationship between these numbers? Or anything they have in common? You have five, 1640 minus 2040. All right, let's see, that's just negative 400. Okay, so there's our numbers. We'll take a minute and pause and see what do these numbers have in common, do you think? Uh, do they have a relationship? Well, yes they do. They're all negative. They're all also multiples of 4. And again, we're looking at quadratics. So let's look at how do these numbers relate to, like how does D of zero? Is there a zero squared up here? Yes, there is. So let's take a minute, let's organize it on the next page a little bit. I'm gonna actually stop the video so I can organize it without taking up too much time. Let's organize these numbers on the next page and see if we can notice another pattern. Okay, so here is our table. So we, I just jawed this up because that's what I would've done in class. Uh, so zero seconds and our difference in height. So at the beginning, there's no difference. After one second, it was 16 seconds difference, and after two, it was six, negative 64. So all these numbers are negative. Cool. They're also all multiples of four. Well, do they have any other common multiples or common, I'm sorry, common factors? 
Are they all multiples of some other number? And yes, they are. Because negative 16 is negative 16. Negative 16 times 1. Negative 64 is negative 16 times 4. Negative 144, in case you didn't know, is 16 times 9. And I hope you're noticing a pattern with the numbers that are multiplying negative 16 by. And by the way, just use a calculator. Nope. You shouldn't know this in the top of your head. So 400 divided, so negative 400 is negative 16 times 25. And what do we notice about 149, 16, 25? Oh yeah, this one's negative 16 times 0. What are these numbers? Well, these numbers are all the perfect squares. And in the last lesson, the same type of thing came up, where we had negative 16 times the perfect squares, so the step number squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared. So including gravity must include something with the step number squared. Falling objects, like last time, are modeled with a quadratic equation. So if you have it printed out, plot the two sets of data on the same coordinate plane. Um, if you don't have it, it's, it's really OK. We're not going to prioritize that. Um, don't worry about it if you don't have it printed out. But if you don't have it printed out, you can see that the first one, d of t, will be a nice straight line with a slope of 406. And the next one is going to be a curved shape. So this graph here will probably be a tad bit of a curve. Oh, no. Yes, this is the curve. n of t, way up here, that's a straight line. That's going to be a straight line, steep. It's going to go way up here. Uh, it's going to go steep pretty quick. And d of t, sorry, the gravity one is going to start to go up quickly, but then it's going to sort of flatten out a bit. And if we kept going, we'd probably see gravity pull that cannonball down further. All right. So let's just move on past that. Let's see. We're not going to actually work on writing the equation, um, but we are going to think about how to, what the equation is. So the equation, d, is going to be sort of a combination of all of these things. It's going to be a combination of the launch equation with no gravity plus the gravity's effect. So basically, what was our first equation we dealt with? Our first equation was 10 plus 406x. So what is this? d equals 10 plus 406x. Oh, dear, no, dear, no. Oh, yeah, 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 I see. Okay. Then we're going to add in the effect of gravity. So what did gravity do? Well, gravity pretty much just brought us down by negative 16t squared, because that was the difference in their heights. If I had just added in all this stuff to my original, I would have gotten here. So now my new equation is going to be this. And by the way, if, if you can't write this equation, like, do not even close to worry about it. Like, seriously, if this part of the, prop, the lesson lost you, like, seriously, we are so far from needing this to be, like, you're fine. Don't worry about it. All right? The poor part of today is really just understanding what parts of the equation tell you. So here's what the equation is really going to give you. There's three different pieces of this equation. And it looks scary, like, don't get me wrong, I understand this is a weird looking equation, but these three things are all, like, unique numbers. So, 10 tells us the starting height. There's also a y-intercept. The 406, what was that? What was the significance of that 406? That was the launch speed. Alright, and then the negative 16, 
is the effect of gravity. If I wanted to get technical, if I wanted to be Mrs. Moreno, I would say that the acceleration due to gravity was 16 feet per second squared in the opposite direction of the launch. Uh, but I'm not going to do that to you. I guess I just did. Whatever. So basically, the negative 16 is gravity's effect. That's what gravity does to ruin our perfect linear line. All right? So we got one more problem to look at. Now if I have this equation, a very similar one, the function defined by this gives the height of a cannonball. See, it's still a cannonball. I should, should well, if I was in class, I would change it's not a cannonball. So the height of the ball, t seconds after the ball leaves the cannon. So what are the terms 50, 312, t, and negative 16, t squared, tell us about the cannonball? So take a minute, pause it, and try that on your own. Now you've paused it. This should be very similar to what we just did above. So the 50, remember, what was that first number with no coefficient? And it's not just the order, so keep in mind, I could move all this stuff around. I can put the 50 over here. I could put the negative 16 t squared up front. It doesn't matter the order. What matters is the 50 has no variable. All right, it's a constant term. I should write the con that's, that's a better way to put it. That actually uses appropriate mathematical vocabulary. There's no constant term. That is my y-intercept, or, or the launch height of the ball. So that's probably the height of the cannon. All right, high ground is better, after all. And the 312t, the constant term with no exponent, Uh, that gives us, not the constant term, what are we doing? Uh, the variable term, there we go, no exponent. That gives us the launch speed was 312 um, feet, meters? Doesn't even say, wow, okay, feet. Um, yes, it is feet though. Oh, it does say feet, I can't read, okay, height and feet, good. Um, I don't even tell you what time it is that I'm recording this, so that's why I can't read. Okay, it was 312 feet per second. And negative 16 t squared, again, it's the term with the exponent. It's the quadratic term. Uh, that's just the effect of that gravity. Downward acceleration due to gravity. So. Um, now we are going to look at the Desmos.com calculator. If you have the online version, this is actually a hyperlink. So you can just click that. And we're going to graph the functions on Desmos. I'm going to show you how easy it is to use Desmos. I'm going to show you how even to change the graphing window. Because when you first look at the graph, uh, it's going to look like absolutely nothing. So let's go to Desmos calculator. Let's just Theodore, because I don't know what's happening. Okay, so we're going to type in our graph, and the equation is negative 16 t squared. Negative 16 t squared plus 312 t plus 50. And that gives, okay, so yeah, this looks like nothing when you first look at it. Oh, sorry. So then, let's change our window. So from 0 to 25 and from 0 to 1,000, I think. So if you didn't know how, what to change your window to, you can click this wrench over here, which is a graph settings, because you everyone knows you change a graph with a wrench. And the x-axis is basically your x window. So how far left do you want to go and how far right do you want to go? So 0, where there'd be no negatives, and negatives are stupid. But if you make it negative like 2 or something, you can at least see 0 on your graph. And then I'm going to go over to like, I don't know, I'll leave that alone for now. My y-axis. These are big numbers. So like, I'm going to start at 0 there. And I'm going to go up to like, oh, 1,000. And like, that's better. I, it's like, alright, I can, I can see this. So let's zoom out a little bit more. Ah, I got a nice curve. Remember, this is graphing the height of a cannon ball, not the cannon. So it's 
thinking about the ball starting here, going up, 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 arcing, arcing, and then going back down to earth. Also, you can see the actual path of the cannonball. All right. So let's just change it to what the it wanted us to go from zero to twenty-five. I'm gonna be negative one. Like they can't stop me. So negative one, twenty-five, and then from zero to two thousand. So, wait, I don't like to this, but I like to actually read the numbers. I might have messed up the window. There we go. Okay. So there's my graph. And changing the window is super helpful. You can always use Desmos Calculator at home to help you graph stuff. I totally recommend it. It's so useful. And you actually have to do it for your assignment anyway. So, um, here's our graph. And what they want us to do with this graph? That's an excellent question. Uh, observe the graph and describe the shape. What does it tell us about the movement of the cannonball? Well, we just talked about that. So it is a curve shape, and that shape of a quadratic graph is actually called a parabola. So that curved shape, that U-shaped graph, is called a parabola. It is not the same as the exponential curve. The exponential graph curve is not a parabola. A parabola is a U. It can either be like opening upwards or it could be opening downwards like this graph here is a u shape even though it opens downwards all right it's a parabola and it tells us that the ball starts out going up quickly slows down to stop and then it goes back down then goes back down quicker quicker, quicker. all right it's faster and faster because when you drop things they go down faster that's like the maximum height the ball reaches and when does that happen and when does the ball hit the ground so think about b and c Maximum height, when does this happen? And when does the ball hit the ground? You look at a graph, you can figure those two things out. Pause it, it shouldn't be too long. Okay, maximum height. Remember, y axis is the height. What is it? Okay, well, it's 1500, so 16, 17, 18, 19, 2000. So less than 1600. Maybe say 1580. Who cares? 75, 90, whatever. 15 something. Not 1510, don't say 1600, that's lazy. Say 1580. And when does it happen? It happens between 9 and 10 seconds, 9.6, 9.5. You even click on this graph and it'll just approximate it for you. So 9.75 seconds, 1571. That is pretty good for me. Alright, sometimes it even thinks it understands what you want. And it might even just bring you automatically to the maximum point. I would actually say that's probably pretty close to the exact maximum value of this graph. So, maximum height, 1,571 feet after 9.75 seconds. And estimate when the ball hits the ground. Uh, well, back to the graph. Um, well, look, that's dot. It's going to give us that dot right there. Exactly 19.659 seconds. And it's at zero feet. So Desmos, it's telling you the important parts of the graph. It's got the highest point. This highest point is actually called the vertex up here. That is the vertex. I'm going to write that over here. The vertex is either the highest or the lowest point of the parabola. It's also like kind of the symmetric point where you have a line of symmetry going through here. It's symmetrical across that. Um, it's the highest point of this parabola, and some parabolas it would be the lowest point. But you notice the graph shows you the vertex. It shows you the x-intercept down here. We're going to give it a new word later today, too. It shows you the y-intercept, which we're going to keep as the y-intercept. And it shows you this other x-intercept. So these parabolas can have two x-intercepts. So when the ball hits the ground, that was, oh, I forgot the number already. It was 19.659 seconds. Uh, let's see, 19.659 seconds after launch. And that's important, it's after it was launched. It's not like later, it's just, when is it? It's 19.659 seconds after launch. It's not 19.65 hour of the day. So what domain is appropriate for this function? Well, domain is the allowed x values. Well, that makes sense. That cannonball, well, cannonball was launched here hit the ground here. 
Do you think a cannonball buried itself into the earth, kept plowing on through it till it got to the mantle in the core? Probably not. It probably just buried itself in the ground right here. Hopefully. Um, otherwise, I'd be kind of violent. So we are just going to say, well, the domains allowed x values. So between 0 and 19.659. Could I have fractional seconds? Could I talk about the height of the cannonball after 1.2 seconds, 1.25 seconds? Yes. So I would say all numbers between 0 and 19.659. All right. I'm only being this precise because the graph told me. Otherwise, it would have been like 19 and a half or 19.9 seconds. All right. So. That's pretty much it for the lesson. The important part of what we learned is the new vocabulary. I guess I need that last term. And that the last vocabulary word we're looking at is really this new word for x-intercept. We're going to call it the zeros. And that's going to come up in our summary a little bit later. Basically, this is the x-intercept, or the zero of the graph. And the zero is basically when, when the output is zero. So we'd say the zero of this function is 19.659, because that is when the output was zero. All right, we'll use that. We'll keep working on that vocabulary. But a lot of this unit and next unit is going to focus on what do the zeros tell you and how to calculate the zeros. Because where algebra gets really fun is calculating the zeros of all of these parabolas. And oh man, it is fun. So buckle up. That'll be May for us in June. So if the cannonball were fired at 800 feet per second, would it reach a mile in height? Okay. So how would I change my Desmos graph to do that? And by the way, a mile is how many feet? I'm just going to pretend that you all know that, and I really hope you do. Or at least know to know it's approximately that much. So miles, 5,280 feet. Um, so not just something I mean, pick up as you go on through life. Miles, 5,280 feet. So if the cannonball is fired at 800 feet per second, we have to change my equation now to reach that. So let's change my equation. Which number gets changed? This one? This one, or this one? This one. Because remember that 312 is my launch height. 800 T. Wow. And what should my uh, what should my window be to see if it gets up to 5,280 feet? I'll just put the Y at 5,280. And by golly, it looks like that cannonball gets definitely past a mile in height. And if I zoom out, it gets up to 10,000 feet, which is definitely more than a mile in height. So, I would say, yes, up to 10,000 feet. That's almost two miles. All right, so cool. We're going to walk real quick through the summary. But then your assignment today uh, is actually, since this video was so long, I remember for so long, you're going to have two days for this assignment. Um, the form can only be filled out in one sitting. Uh, actually, I suppose you, I, you could probably submit it half done and then come back and complete the other half. Um, you just have to remember where you left off, or look and see where you left off. Um, but basically I would suggest either doing that, or just, um, doing it on paper, like writing your answers down on paper around, around the doc, and then just recording them all later, because it's going to be the same questions that are down below here. It's kind of a lot of questions too, so it's good that it's two days. All right, so if today is an A day, tomorrow Tuesday's a B day, it's just due, I mean, technically midnight on B day, but like, let's be real, it doesn't really matter. Have it done before your next like A day class. All right, so let's just walk through real quick the notes. So basically, um, to summarize, we talked about how each of these three parts of the equation sort of combined the linear form mx plus b with the effect of gravity. So like again with this, the upward, the original height of this object being launched um, was 5 feet. And it was going upwards at 60 feet per second, and then gravity was bringing it back down. 
all right? And assuming gravity affected some objects differently, they might move differently, but really gravity affects almost all objects the same. Um, there's a few exceptions, but for the most part, gravity is always going to do this. This is a very standard physics formula, so you get used to seeing that in your realistic math problems, because all this math is super realistic. Um, so, yeah, that's linear. Again, slow intercept form and then effective gravity. And then we talked about the vertical intercept. It was the y-intercept at 5 is where we started out. And again, this vertex is right up here. That top point is the vertex. It's the highest point that it reaches. And then this graph is the shape of a parabola. That's a very standard quadratic graph with an exponent of 2. That's the very common shape is the parabola. It's a special U shape. And then we notice that the graph hits zero at here, and this point over here is our zero, or it's our x-intercept. All right, and it hits the ground a little bit before four seconds, so like, I don't know, maybe it's 3.8 or 3.9. Um, yeah, they say about 3.8. So we call that point the zero. An input value that produces an output of zero is called a zero. So here, a zero is approximately 3.8. There will be another zero back in the negatives, but let's be real, that zero probably doesn't matter because that the cannonball did not launch itself through the cannon backwards towards the ground. So that, does, that zero doesn't matter in the real world context. All right, so that's it for the video. Um, the important vocabulary is above. Vertex, parabola, zero. And I think I missed one already. So, uh, you're free to work on your assignment. Again, it's due. You have two days for it. You have both today and tomorrow's class day for it. Tomorrow's assignment, there's no video, which I hope you'll enjoy. This one was long. It's just the assignment. All right?